I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I am privileged to be recording this vodcast today, the Gimui Wulabari Yidinji people of the Gimui, and I would like to recognize their elders past, present, and emerging. Welcome back everybody to The Growth Distillery where we are recording live from Khan in Cairns and I'm joined by the fabulous Mel Hopkins, uh, the Chief Marketing and Audience Officer Correct. at Seven. Um, and I couldn't think of anyone better to be talking about storytelling up here in Cairns. So to kick things off, I'd love to get your take. How have you seen storytelling, for better or worse, uh, evolve over the last couple of years? I think it's super interesting because on one side, I love the fact that people have taken storytelling into their own hands. Mm. Very much the rise of the creators uh, on platforms such as Insta or TikTok have really driven that, even things like podcasts. Mm. And I think that's absolutely amazing and that excites me. I think... We've got so many different platforms on which to see content and their storytelling within that. On the other side, I think that quite sadly, actually, people's attention may have got less mm. and there may not be so much deep storytelling. And there's a lot of quite shallow mm. examples of people screwing up things in life or the, the love of the maths or you know, the, the love of a survivor or, you know, even on our own platforms, the love of a blow deck that rate very, very, very <laughs> yeah. well. But is that really true storytelling or is that just a different form of entertainment? And why do you think that is? Why do you think that we've, we've gone, you know, to, to use your terminology, a little bit more shallow with storytelling? I wonder, it's just the world according to Mel Hopkins, but I, I actually think through um, COVID, it was so, so heavy. Mm. And then you had what was happening with Russia and the Ukraine and what's happening in the US. The world's chaotic yeah. and um, maybe there hasn't been enough depth in really, really good storytelling and a lot mm. of those sort of reality programs, I think people feel they don't have to think too good hard. To escape. And yeah, it's always a bit of fun to poke fun at other people. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the creator economy and I think that's a, a really interesting dynamic that's playing out. Um, from your perspective, what are some of the other forces uh, that are shaping storytelling right now? Um, I think one of the forces, so someone that I, I love that I think is brilliant at storytelling and championing storytelling is actually Reese Witherspoon and Hello Sunshine. So not, not so much Reese from an from a actor perspective. Mm. And what I love is they've gone back actually to the art of what I would call storytelling because Hello Sunshine very much champions um, brilliant female authors mm. that have written amazing stories and brings them to the screen. Yeah. That really excites me that there's a lot of that type of storytelling coming back because there's, there's, there's depth and lots of twists and, and turns. So that really excites me. I think the other thing is everyone probably feels a little more comfortable telling their own story mm. today. People are a lot more authentic. They're a lot more open and honest. I think the risk on, you know, if I talk about the creator economy, there's some really brilliant examples there. It does scare me that I think people often just want quick fame and they're maybe not authentic there. Mm. And, and it's, it's, it's hard work for anyone that works in a storytelling industry to get a, a story up and to consistently make revenue or money out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you see storytelling become a more, becoming a more potent tool in the marketer's toolkit over the coming years? Uh, absolutely. And I actually spoke here on a panel yesterday around brand versus performance. And my, my fear is with so much focus on performance marketing, you stop telling stories mm. about brands. And that's super, super important. I think we've lost a little focus on that. Yeah. Um, you know, I call out some of my great peers like a Mim Haysom, a Susan Coghill, a Brent Smart, that are brilliant at performance marketing, mm. but put so much passion and focus into telling stories around their brands authentically mm. and building that out. But I do think that particularly because of where the economy is too at the moment, there's a real focus on short-termism yeah. uh, and stories end up getting cut out of that as a result. And as a CMO, how do you juggle that dynamic between you know the long and the short of it? Well, look, I'm a new CMO at Seven, so three months in at Seven and it's very different there. Yeah, I bet. So, you know, 
you'd argue what we sell is the art of storytelling every single day. And we're very good at telling the story around our programs. What we haven't been so good at is telling the story around Y7. So there's a massive job to, to bring people back to, to the platform and why we exist mm. as, a, as a platform. And yeah. otherwise it just becomes around shows and, yeah. and not why you go um, visit there. Um, brands don't exist without storytelling. Mm. Like they simply, they simply don't. And, you know, I'll, I'll use another great example, JB Hi-Fi. You know, everyone thinks they're performance marketing based. And sure, they do a lot of that. Their whole experience is storytelling. Yeah. When you go into the store, the way that the bin ends are labelled, the experience in there with the staff, the big signs with texters, it's all about storytelling that I'm going into an environment mm. where I'm going to get great service and great value and I feel I'm going to get a deal. That in itself is storytelling. It doesn't have to be yep. a beautiful piece of film that Ridley Scott ends up producing yeah, for you. Yeah, the ceremonies and artefacts that Jamie High Five bring to life. I Correct. think they're absolutely spot Correct. on. Um, okay, well, you said... So you said Seven, you know, at, at the core of what Seven does is storytelling. So how, how do you bring storytelling to life within Seven? Well, I have the pleasure of not having to bring our programs to life because I'm surrounded by amazing executive producers and directors that tell those stories every day, including our news crew. My job is to demonstrate to Australia that we have amazing storytelling on our platform. And that's a real challenge when our competitors are probably 11 different platforms mm. and ensuring you get that relevance. And often what you've got to do in advertising is tell a story in a very different way to how a 30 minute or 60 minute program is packaged. So gone are the days of just taking a couple of cuts from the show, hoping that they're going to work. Yeah, and stitching that together. Yeah, because it, you know, if I'm honest, marketing really is flirting. It's flirting. And, you know, I, I, I've said this to Angus Ross and Craig McPherson. Angus is our chief of content and um, uh, Craig is our, our chief of news and public affairs. My job is to drive valuable audiences into the platform. If they turn off because the content is crap after three that's minutes, not with you. that's not really with me, yeah. but I will own that. And, and marketing is that. It's the flirt. Yep. It's like, okay, I'm interested in finding a bit more out. And then it's up to the individuals to determine whether they want to take that further on. I love that. Marketing is the flirt. Yeah, it is. All right. Um, what's a recent piece of what I would call gold standard storytelling that's inspired you? And I'm, I'm going to challenge you to go outside of film and TV. Oh, that's easy because I don't think there's a hell of a lot in film and TV, really. So, uh, except ITV and maybe Channel 4 in the UK. Look, this is going to sound horribly cliched and they were the ones that started doing amazing storytelling in advertising. I'm trying to think probably, what, 2008, but Dove just continues to globally yep. build out and break amazing stories that are relevant. And the reason I also love that as a brand is it's an FMCG brand that is, you know, shampoo or basic skincare and how they champion what they feel is important mm. through storytelling super amazing again very cliched but, but brilliantly authentic very authentic and yeah. you couldn't rip it off like it yeah. would feel like but they've it wasn't maybe authentic to start with but they've stuck with it and, yeah, they've, and they've, they've, they've created a moat they have that space they now, have yeah. um nike yet again just continue to amaze me with their storytelling and actually how they evolve and that storytelling builds out even their recent work which is probably more ambush for the women's world cup um, that they've done in the States, I think is is really, really, really spectacular mm. and um, and very, very moving. And and closer to home, actually, the work that NRMA has done recently um, with fab uh, creative agency called Bear Meets Eagle on Fire, I think also is a really interesting way on telling stories um, around, um, you know, what happens when disaster strikes, but mm. actually you don't have to stress about it until it does. And yeah. and Zara, the acting CMO, I love that she pushed that, you know, she did big cinema buy for that because she felt it was incredibly important that that work had the, the, the space and the theatre to be yeah. shared. Yeah. yeah. For those that lead teams like yours uh, to novel thought, um, what are the principles that you would give to those particularly tuning in around not falling victim to, you know, the performance paradox. Being curious, 
and being curious outside of your category. It's so easy that we all get so insular with um, the blinkers on. Mm. You need to learn. Like events like this are amazing because it makes you think differently. And even if you go to one panel that's not so great versus another one, it makes you think differently. I'm really big on looking at what others are doing and mm. critiquing that actually both within the team on what is good and bad. You know, global publications like Drum and Ad Age and Campaign, I think are great at bringing that to life. Mm. Um, Fast Company is amazing. Um, but then even, you know, in, in your stable, I'm a big one of the best publications in the world that I think does brilliant storytelling is the New York Times. Mm. Um, and I'm a big consumer of that. So I think you, you've got to nourish the soul with what true storytelling is. But that, that means you've got to go out all the time and be curious. So I do stuff with my team where every week there's an ad of the week and people will debate about it. Or we look at what other people are doing brilliantly. And that's the way that you, you learn um, yeah, observe. Observe who's doing it well and observe who's screwing up. I think that that is brilliant advice. Nourish the soul. Uh, Mel, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having absolute you on The Growth Distillery. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. Pleasure. Thank you.